Hi, I'm Belinda Carley, the Director of the Institute of Personal Care Science, and today I'm going to be showing you a really innovative product type, and that is crackling creams. Now, for those of you who haven't seen a crackling cream before, it's basically a product that, when applied to the skin, has an amazing crackling effect. It gives the consumer a real wow impact when they use the product. I'm going to be showing you how to create these products with a standard base emulsion and a highly acidic liquid product. And when these combine on the skin, they give that instant wow factor that will really grab your consumer's attention. Just to give you a visual demonstration, I'm going to apply a very small amount of this cream to my hand, and then some base. And watch what happens when I mix the two. It really foams up. And this gives a consumer a real wow factor. So you could build a product story around the product with this sort of effect. You could incorporate some um, energizing type actives that would really suit this product story. You could incorporate some minerals or some hydrating elements as well because the consumer is instantly wowed by the visual and then the, the product itself does feel very, very soft on the skin. So it does have a lasting sensory impact as well. The first product we need to create is the highly acidic um, gel product. So basically here it's just a basic gel that has been made to a pH of around 2 and then I've just added a small amount of colorant just to give it that visual appeal of blue. Now one of the things that's really important when creating a gel that you want some clarity out of with such a low pH is you need to select a polymer that is going to give you the clarity and suit the very low pH of this product. My uh, polymer of choice for this type of application is Sepimax then. It's a Sepic product and it can handle extremely high levels of electrolytes and also extremely acidic conditions. I'm going to add my citric acid into the water so that it starts by being a very acid solution. Next, I'm going to add my Sepimax Zen because it will need time to hydrate. When using Sepimax then you'll see that it does not disperse instantly. So often you'll need to add it and mix with low shear for some time. Because this product is so acidic, I can add this polymer, give it a stir to start the dispersion, leave it overnight and come back the next day and stir again. And when I come back the next day, it will have formed a nice gel. Giving it another stir will help make sure that that gel network is homogeneously spread throughout. Because the product is so acidic, I don't need to worry about a preservative. It is self-preserving. Because this product is so acidic, I have added a dye to the finished product. So this is a product I prepared earlier and I have added some dye to it so that it can be seen. Now on consumer packaging, this product should remain separate to the base cream that we're going to make. It should also have some warning instructions uh, instructing the consumer to put the cream on their skin first and then add this very acidic product. Because of the pH being around 2, it can be corrosive and irritating to the skin, but when it's applied on top of the cream, it just gives that fantastic visual effect. But make sure your packaging is appropriate to its use and also ensures safe consumer handling and dispensing. 
Now let's prepare our base emulsion. So what I have measured here is lipids. So I've got 15.5% by weight lipids in here. Now you can pick any lipids you want really. It comes down to the skin feel you want to create. The reason I have so much lipid, 15.5% is a relatively high input of lipids for a standard emulsion, is because when you are combining the cream with the gel, you are effectively halving all the contents of the cream. So if I want to get about 7.5% lipid content in my finished product once it's applied, I actually need to have double that um, as my base emulsion to begin with because I'm combining this with the gel, remember. So I am uh, reducing the lipid content of the amount of product applied significantly when I apply the gel. The other thing I want to point out is that when creating this type of product, it needs to be stable when the two elements are mixed. So what I'm using here, I'm actually going to be using two types of non-ionic emulsifiers, non-ionic blends. I have already added some Montanov 202. Uh, and one of the reasons I've used this material is it comes as pastels to begin with, but it creates an extremely white emulsion, as you can see. And this is important because I'm trying to get that visual effect with the consumer of mixing the blue acidic gel with the white emulsion. So when it's applied to the skin, it does give the appearance or image of purity. So to create that really white emulsion, I'm using Montanov 202. I'm also further stabilizing this blend with some Montanov 82. Another material that's crucial to forming this type of product is an electrolyte resistant polymer. So I'm using Cepi Plus 400 in this case. And this is important because when I combine the two phases, don't forget I'm going to be adding a lot of acid to my emulsion base. So it needs to be a material that can handle a high loading of electrolytes. Now once it's cooled below 40 degrees, we can add our preservative, uh, perfumes and antioxidant if required. And the final step is to add the sodium bicarbonate. Now it's the sodium bicarbonate that will cause the product to fizz when it's combined with the citric acid from the highly acidic gel product. Now adding the sodium bicarbonate will make your product very low viscosity on the day. But this product will thicken up considerably overnight. And you will then have this beautiful white emulsion and your blue acidic gel. And remember for that really outstanding visual effect. I hope you enjoyed this presentation on crackling creams. Look forward to more sensory stimulating formulations to come soon. Happy formulating!